What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today, I'm going to be sharing what I think are the five most useful ways of joining 3D printed parts together. Let's get started. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist, and if you haven't already, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos. Now, if you've seen my channel before, then you'll know that I like to employ different types of technology and electronics to make awesome, sometimes impractical, but awesome projects. The most common technology that I use is 3D printing, and while 3D printing has definitely come a long way in the past couple decades, there are still limits to the shapes and sizes of objects that 3D printers can produce. Whether my parts don't fit on the print bed or they simply can't be printed successfully, I often find myself having to break my designs into multiple different parts that print separately and are then joined together to complete the design. In this video, I wanted to go over what I think are the five most useful ways to join 3D printed parts together, and I'll share some pros and cons of each method. Method number one, adhesives. Now, this might seem obvious, but adhesives are a great option when it comes to quickly and easily joining parts together for several reasons. First off, there are a bunch of different types of adhesives like super glue, epoxy, E6000, and good old fashioned hot glue. The wide variety of available adhesives allows you to pick which attributes best suit your needs and go from there. If, for example, you need something strong but not necessarily permanent, you might use hot glue. If you're looking for a stronger, more permanent bond, you might go with super glue, epoxy, or E6000. Two other great options, though not technically adhesives, would be using acetone to fuse the two parts together, or even a 3D pen to join the parts with melted plastic. Another great advantage of using adhesives is that they often require little to no change to your designs in order to make them printable. In most cases, you can simply split your design into two or more bodies by using your design software. For example, you can use Fusion 360's split body command to split the design using either a sketch plane or an existing face. If you don't wanna actually alter your designs, you can even use the cut feature in Prusa Slicer to break up your bodies and then arrange them in whatever way works for you. Another pro of adhesives is that many of them can be sanded along with the printed parts. If, for example, you're a cosplayer and you want to print a helmet that doesn't fit on your print bed, you can easily sand down any of the scenes so that they're hardly noticeable. As far as cons go, with the exception of maybe hot glue, adhesives are fairly permanent. So if your parts need to be separable, you'll need to use one of the other methods in this video. Which brings me to method number two, snap fit joints. Snap fit joints are simply a way of utilizing the mechanical properties of the plastic to keep the parts joined together, usually in the form of a stud, hook, or a bead. Snap fit joints are used all over the place today and anything from that clip that keeps my dog's collar on to the mechanism designed to keep a pen cap from falling off. These types of joints are great because they require very little effort to assemble and there are many different types of snap fit joints so you can use whichever one suits your needs. On the other hand, these do require more effort in the design phase and it can be difficult to figure out the right tolerances that allow the best fit. On top of that, since print accuracy can vary from printer to printer, you might run into issues if you use more than one printer. Method number three, designing threads into your parts. This method is pretty self-explanatory, but basically it involves designing threads right into your parts. And that could mean you are adding internal threads to a hole so that a bolt fits into it easily, or you're adding external threads to your part, or both. This method does require more effort during the designing phase, but Fusion 360 and other modeling software often have built-in tools to assist in the creation of threads. And they will often handle tolerances for you as well, so you can generate perfectly functional threads in a matter of seconds. An extension of this method that I found particularly useful is to simply add an unthreaded hole and then to use a bolt that's slightly larger than the hole to carve the threads as it goes. This option requires very little extra design work. In fact, all you really need to do is figure out the right tolerance so that the bolt is able to successfully cut the threads. I most often find myself using this method for M2 bolts since those threads are so small that they don't print very well anyways. 
so I just skip the threads altogether. As far as downsides go, 3D printed plastic is not as strong as metal, so if you apply too much torque to the bolt, you'll basically end up ripping all the threads out of the hole, making it pretty much useless. Which brings me to the fourth method, good old fashioned nuts and bolts. If you find yourself needing more torque than your plastic threads can provide, you might wanna consider just using nuts and bolts to attach two parts together. If done correctly, the bolt will hold the nut in place and you won't have to worry about stripping out the plastic threads. This method is great because it isn't difficult at all to add hexagonal holes to your part and all you have to do is figure out the appropriate tolerance for the size of nut you want to use. You can also use this concept for small neodymium magnets if you're looking to be able to quickly separate the parts. If you wanna take this concept even further, you could embed the nuts or magnets directly into your parts. This involves designing a cavity in your part that the nut or magnet fits into, then pausing the print at the right layer so you can insert the nut or magnet before resuming the print. This method is called a captive nut, and it definitely bumps the difficulty level up a few notches, as you not only have to add the cavities to the inside of your parts, but you also have to configure the slicer to stop the print at the right layer. This isn't all that hard to do in Prusa Slicer, but it's worth mentioning that not all printers respond to the filament color change command in the same way. But if your printer can handle it, captive nuts and magnets can be a nice, clean way to join two parts together. The fifth and final method that I wanna talk about today, which also happens to be my favorite method, is the use of heat set inserts. If you aren't familiar, heat set inserts are little brass components that are inserted into the plastic using heat, usually in the form of a soldering iron. Heat set inserts give you a clean, strong thread that's melted directly into your part, and it's as simple as adding the right sized hole to your part. Any soldering iron should work, but you can also buy special tips that help keep the insert flush with the surface of your part. Another downside is that once you've heat inserted the heat inserts, they're pretty hard to recover. I was able to reheat one and pull it out with a set of pliers, but it just resulted in a sticky mess and I wasn't even able to reuse it. Also, keep in mind that you need to add a little bit of extra space below the insert for the molten plastic to flow because otherwise it'll squish back up into the insert and you won't be able to use it. But even with those downsides in mind, this is still my favorite method of joining two or more parts together because it results in a super strong connection while still allowing for the parts to be disassembled if needed. Plus, I think the brass inserts make my parts look professionally manufactured, which is usually a nice touch. Anyways, that's my five favorite methods of joining 3D printed parts together, but I'm sure there are tons of other methods out there. So make sure to let me know in the comments how you like to join your parts together. If you're interested in using some of these methods, I'll throw some links in the description with some design tips to consider. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos and follow me on Instagram for updates on the projects I'm working on. Otherwise, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.